Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm testing a large format compression driver mounted to my ES290 by radial. This is the RCF ND950 with the uh, two inch throat adapter. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna provide my subjective listening impressions as well as some test data showing distortion and frequency response and all that jazz. So let's get started. So like I mentioned, it's a large format. It has a four inch voice coil titanium diaphragm. It has a copper shorting ring in the voice coil gap to reduce distortion as well. Um, it retails for around $495 US dollars, which is about $664 Canadian. Um, so yeah, let's look at what the published data from the manufacturer has. So it's got um, good loading down to uh, around 500 hertz, but we do see a minus 5 dB shelf starting at around 5 kilohertz. A little bit concerning, but what I find is that RCF actually under publishes their data or under embellishes, <laughs> what's the word for that? Um, does not embellish. Um, so anyways, uh, we'll see that in a bit that, that, uh, that it actually performs better than what they've published. So now looking at the impedance sweep, this is my own test data. Uh, we can see the fundamental FS at around 300 hertz. Um, and then we do see some breakup starting to happen at around 9 kilohertz, which is typical for this size of driver. Um, now this is the resulting frequency response on my biradial. Actually, I'll go back uh, just to show you what the biradial looks like here. So you can see here it's a uh, about uh, 27 inches wide, 300 hertz cutoff, and so gone to great lengths to kind of reduce the edge diffraction and resonances that might occur. So it's best case scenario, I would think, for this compression driver, showing what it's uh, capable of. I'm not sure what horn they tested on with the published data, but I suspect it was a constant directivity horn uh, with, because you can see that falling response there. Uh, anyways, back to the response. You can see here, we're actually quite a bit better than published. We don't have that uh, minus 5 dB shelf that we saw earlier. Uh, starting at around 9 kilohertz, we don't see any kind of peaks. We actually see a, a drop in the response. Um, and then we do see some elevated peaks uh, in the upper treble. So typical uh, application for this would be mid-range covering up to around 8 kilohertz. And so um, we don't quite see it here because of the gated measurement, but we would see a flat response down to 300 hertz. Uh, looking at what happens into the upper treble, extending the graph out to 50 kilohertz, we can see that it simply falls off at around uh, 18 kilohertz. Uh, burst decay, which is gated, uh, we can see what's happening with the breakup in the diaphragm there. Um, the CSD plot kind of more clearly shows what's happening through its passband. So we do see the typical uh, stored energy at the driver's FS, but through its passband, we don't have anything too concerning. We see a fast decay, a little bit there through the mid range, and then obviously uh, we're going to have. Uh, some anomalies there in the upper treble. Um, looking at distortion, I tested it at 85 and 95 dB. We can see an extremely clean distortion sweep where we're predominantly, uh, we're seeing the second harmonic there, which is uh, very benign and not really attributable to any uh, harm in sound quality. Uh, increasing the test SPL further, we're getting extremely low harmonic numbers and uh, looking at intermodulation distortion, uh, we see this uh, shelved effect to the noise profile. However, we, we have a very flat uh, noise profile through its passband. We're exceeding our target for dis uh, intermodulation distortion on this driver. It's uh, minus 73 dB dynamic range at our 85 dB test signal. If we increase the test signal uh, to the 95 dB, SPL at one meter, uh, we just see a linear rise in, in IMD uh, with that hump showing up there uh, due to the diaphragm breakup. So um, checks that box for intermodulation. We're seeing um, that this in fact exceeds our in-house target for sound quality. I did measure the Gedley metric, so you can see it here just for reference, but the uh, 10 kilohertz um, is showing 0 0.0078 for the Gedley metric, so it's a really good number. Uh, and then distortion um, is at 0.12%. 
uh, in my Virtin software. So uh, subjective listening impressions. So I found that this had tremendous authority, similar to what I was getting with other large format drivers that I've tested. So the DCX 464 and the BMS 459, um, the, both the 9, 90 and the 91 which have the same uh, diaphragm but you're getting that um, special ability uh, for having shocking realism and effect and that's something that I've only found with these larger drivers uh, being able to produce a level of perceived dynamic range that's unmatched by any other solution um, so this certainly hits the, hits the mark on that. Now I found the upper treble was not as resolved, obviously, as uh, some of the smaller format drivers, but this is an expected trade-off uh, when dealing with these uh, larger drivers. So I would suggest crossing this over and around uh, 7 kilohertz to a dedicated high-frequency horn. Uh, but overall, the RCF ND950 is a world-class product provide, providing excellent overall sound quality. So a quick review today on a, on a nice product there. Um, that's it for today. Take care and have a wonderful day.